Welcome back to The Good Life Journey. This channel is all about pursuing meaning and fulfillment. And in today's video, we're going to take a hard look at our jobs. Why? Because for most of us, this is where we spend a very large share of our day. But can current jobs and career prospects actually provide us with meaning and fulfillment? In today's video, we're taking a cold look at the data, specifically at the most complete global data set on employee engagement, which is basically reflecting how happy or miserable we currently are in our jobs. And this is studied across 160 countries. Consciously or unconsciously, a lot of people seek meaning and fulfillment through their jobs and careers. But what does the data say? Would we be actually better served by not creating unrealistic expectations from our jobs? Towards the end of this video, I will also explain how all of this ties toward the option of pursuing financial independence. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's go. In a previous video, we examined the question of why humans continue to work so hard for so long hours despite the tremendous economic and technological progress that we've experienced recently, particularly over the last century. And we identified six possible answers to this question from James Sussman's book, Work, A History of How We Spend Our Time. Achieving social status, keeping up with the Joneses, recent rises in inequality, or just different traits and mindsets that we may have inherited from our farming and hunter-gatherer ancestors were some of the factors that explained why we continue to work so, so hard in an era of abundance. Again, despite the tremendous economic and technological progress that we've witnessed. In light of these reasons, please forgive me for thinking that plowing away at a job for eight hours a day, a job that perhaps you're not passionate about, for the next three or four decades may not be the very best of ideas. Gallup's report on global employee experience represents the most comprehensive study tracking employee experience across 160 countries, and it allows us to understand better how employees feel about their jobs and lives today. All right, so what were the main takeaways, the main results of this report? Well, firstly, that the share of employees globally reported feeling engaged in their jobs is incredibly low. It was only 23% of global employees in 2022. What does feeling engaged mean in the context of this report? Well, it can be broadly defined as employees that find their work meaningful and that feel connected to both their team and organization. What does this data mean? Sadly, nearly eight out of 10 global employees currently are not finding meaning nor fulfillment in their current jobs. There are, of course, differences found across regions, as illustrated in the map below. If you're interested in the data for your specific country, I'll leave a link in the description below to the data set so you can check out what it is in your particular region. At a regional scale, the best performers, the ones that had the largest share of uh, engaged employees, were Southeast Asia and the US whereas the, the worst performers were found in North Africa and in Europe. Reported employee engagement does seem to be improving slowly though. Despite the incredibly low statistic that I mentioned earlier, 23% of global employees feel engaged in 2022, it is actually a historic high. So it is up from 12% since 2009, which is when polling began. Despite the poor statistics, it seems that employers have attempted to improve working conditions for its employees since they know that disengaged colleagues can hamper their organization's productivity. Interestingly, the report estimates the opportunity cost of low employee engagement globally to be roughly 9% of global GDP. What does this mean in simple terms? There is a massive cost to having unhappy employees. A key question to ask is whether these ongoing employer efforts to improve their employees' experience will be sufficient in the future to substantially improve these very poor statistics, or whether a large part, a large share of this dissatisfaction is actually stemming from the actual nature of the jobs and by elements that the employer can't actually control. Indeed, the proliferation of bullshit jobs may be one of the reasons explaining why 77% of the global employee workforce is currently unhappy with their current jobs. Bullshit jobs were defined by David Graeber as employment that is so completely pointless, unnecessary or pernicious that even the employee cannot justify its existence. 
Another work-related indicator the report looks at is stress. Reported employee stress has been rising steadily over the years and actually reached an all-time high in 2022. 44% of global employees reported feeling a lot of stress. So to sum up and address our main question, how good are your current jobs at providing us with meaning and fulfillment? The data suggests that currently they are doing a very poor job at providing us with this function. Unfortunately, employees feel increasingly stressed and despite some progress, continue to feel disengaged at the workplace. For most employers, their job is unlikely to be a source of positive energy, recognition and self-worth. What does all of this mean in relation to financial independence? Well, in my view, we provided today two key arguments of the importance of pursuing financial independence. Firstly, as we saw in a previous video, most of us continue to work very hard for very long hours for not very convincing reasons, for example, for achieving status or keeping up with the Joneses. Secondly, current jobs are not only not offering fulfillment, but are increasingly stressful. And therefore, the prospect of staying in the workforce in conventional jobs does not sound very appealing for most. If you are young and starting out your career, you may want to give this some thought. The prevailing narrative we receive through our educational systems is that we should invest a lot of effort in building up our career, that transitioning through this path will be meaningful in itself, and that at the end of this pathway we will somehow bump into happiness. However, as demonstrated in today's video, the data does not seem to support this narrative. There are of course many places where one can find fulfillment and happiness, but the workplace and your job position may not be one of them. This is not to say that a lot of people don't find meaning and contentment in their jobs. I know a lot of people that find this. However, just be aware that the odds are stacked up against you. On average, it is much more likely that you will be unhappy or unengaged in your job than the opposite. And this is maybe quite relevant for very young um, people starting out on their careers. It's probably not helpful to stay, set yourself unrealistic expectations of what your job and career may offer it's important to diversify your interest and to pursue other forms of meaning and contentment besides your job and your working career. If you're interested in this topic of where to find meaning and fulfillment, please subscribe to this channel since in the Good Life journey, we're all about distilling advice and good tips on how to lead a good life, one that seeks meaning, contentment and tranquility. And in this channel, we argue that pursuing financial independence is an important ingredient of le leading a good life. Why? Because it gives us agency of how we spend our time. All right, that was all for today. Please let us know in the comments below how you feel currently about your job and whether you have a plan in place for achieving financial independence. All right, good luck, take care, and I hope to see you in the next video.